As we continue to follow the many ways the People's Rising Academy is helping others in our community, we turn to a place that we've talked about before. That's the Garden of Healing. We have Jody with us this morning, Dr. Miles, and then Sarah Fisher in the middle with us this morning, talking about crosses for Cameron. Uh, welcome to North Dakota today, everyone. How's it going? Great. Thank you. Giving Hearts Day. It is, I see we have all gotten a memo <laughs> on Giving Hearts Day, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a little bit. But um, first, Jody, can you tell us how People's Rising Academy uh, got involved uh, with, the, with the Garden of Healing? Well, um, I, Sarah uh, had lost her son in a tragic car accident in 2018, Cameron, and they felt the need to create a place for healing in the community and had gone to the park district and kind of got permission to use this piece of land. And at the groundbreaking of phase one, I was drawn to that and had stopped by and listened to their story and felt I really wanted to leave a legacy for my four lost children, whether it was just helping with the garden or leaving some type of memorial in honor of them. But, and so long story short, we ended up going to a, uh, a lunch meeting and talked about kind of some of the lo our losses and shared stories and cried. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, you're the co-founder of phase two. That's where it ended up going. So. Just an incredible thing to be a part of, and I'm, I'm very honored to know Sarah and Arlen as well. And it, just to give the community a place to heal and grieve and share stories and connections with one another has just been incredible. incredible. And this last October, we, when we were doing phase one and had the, the grand opening ribbon cutting, the amount of people that showed up was just amazing. There was probably over 300 people there that day. And when we were even constructing the Garden of Healing, people would just stop by, share their stories, would be drawn in to what was happening there. And it was just really great to have, just to be a part of that and to, in helping people's grieving. I could feel the healing energy that was coming off of there, which yeah. is amazing. It is. Uh, so Sarah, what's it like for you to be involved with this and to have a place with a lasting impact? You know, when I first presented it to Arlen, he said, well, I know you're very passionate about it, but honestly, like, who else is going to be as passionate? And um, at the groundbreaking, we had all five mayors of the cities came, and as well as the governor of North Dakota showed up to surprise us and actually make uh, May a proclamation for Organ Donation Month in honor of Cameron's memory. And so, um, you know, as we started doing it, I started getting phone calls. As Jody said, we would be there working and people would just show up. And um, we actually attended a, the suicide awareness event at the Shields Arena in September. And um, we looked over and Jody said, there's someone crying at the garden. So we went over there and we visited with her and she said, you know, my daughter passed away in um, February and she said, I couldn't bring myself to go over to the Shields Arena, but she said, I found healing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. yeah, we just had stories like that throughout the whole time. And we just know that this is going to be such a wonderful place for people. And it's not just for loss. It's any kind of healing, you know, such as Jody. Um, she had a major life change. And, you know, maybe you're a cancer survivor or... Um, Maybe you just have overcome something in your life. And, and you're obviously very passionate about it, which um, thank you for coming on. This is a place that you'll be able to come and just reflect. Mm -hmm. And talking about that, and the, it, it's hard probably to talk about it and, and to keep going through it, but it does create that place for other people to come. And that is the legacy left behind yeah. that how many more people will be impacted by this and have some healing in their own life through it, yes. which, exactly. which is amazing. And yeah. so now, Dr. Miles, can you just, um, from your standpoint, talk a little bit about the, the benefits of nature uh, when it comes to healing? Yeah, um, I, I think to understand nature, we have to understand what happens when nature is not involved. So let's just say you're sitting in the doctor's office and the doctor comes in and gives you a life-changing diagnosis or tells you your your son or your daughter's no longer here your heart rate starts to pick up you start sweating you start to kind of collapse in on yourself you know you hear buzzing in your ears the voices become quiet and you go to this place that's dark right and this is the process of grief 
and it's, it's terrible, and it's, it's required. And then what nature has to offer is it kind of breaks the norms of normal grief. And much like nature, beauty, music, all these things, what they offer is when you're collapsing in on yourself and the ego that surrounds you is all falling in and you feel small, you actually get a positive emotion with that when you're in nature. And what that does is we all, you know, whether it's metaphorically or <laughs> objectively true, we don't know, but we all carry a cross to some sort on our shoulder. And what that does is it makes the cross a little lighter. It allows you to step onto one foot, take a step forward, and trench through life, because life is suffering. And the best thing we can do is get our personal responsibility together, get our act together, heal the right way, and just walk through with that cross on our shoulder some good advice and we are going to be talking more about the garden and its benefits and and uh, the event that is going on as well today on giving hearts day for it we'll be right back after this quick break